these lips of clay in the next few moments to speak an anointed word, Lord God, from heaven to their hearts, Lord God, that they may receive it. They may grow into it. They may walk into it, Lord God, and they, they may be changed and rearranged and may do the impossible. Devil, get out of this room. Get out of our thought life. I thank you right now. We are good ground. We're ready to go. We're ready to receive it, Lord God, in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen. So in this series, we've been talking about new covenant faith. Everybody say new, new. Covenant, covenant faith. All right, so in this series, I want you to learn what a covenant is. Okay, my objective is for you to learn what a covenant is. I want you to understand God's part in the new covenant. I want you to understand your part in the new covenant. I want you to understand the differences between the covenants that we have. And I want you to have some understanding and knowledge how to apply this covenant to your life. You see, in all you're getting, get what? understanding. You have to get understanding in order to do something to have a practical application. So this today we're going to start in Romans. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn to um, Romans chapter six. Romans chapter six. Boy, I am fired up. I know the Super Bowl is tonight. Anybody uh, cheering? Anybody's teams playing the Super Bowl tonight? Yeah. yeah. Who's your team? Chiefs. Anybody in the 49s in here? All right, no wars. Okay, praise God. All right. All right, praise God. Well, we, uh, you know, as the football season is, is coming to an end, praise God. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl, uh, but don't get your mind on the Super Bowl right now. <laughs> Let's get our mind on the word of God so we can, we can uh, get this word and God can help us show us what we need to do. So what do we say? Romans chapter what? Romans chapter 6, and I think it's verse 23. All right. I think I may have a slide for that. Ah, I did. Okay. So Romans chapter 6, verse 23. You there? Yeah. Ready? Read it. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, we don't just read through Scripture to read through Scripture. Okay? If you're doing the Bible reading at church, uh, doing the Bible reading with us, make sure you spend time with the, with the Word of God. If there are things that you don't understand, right, in the Bible, get a dictionary. Get a Bible dictionary. It's strong concordance so that you can go in and look up what those words mean. OK, because words that were spoken then are different than the words that we have now. OK, I mean, you know that when somebody say, oh, man, that's hot. Right. When I was growing up, when something was hot, it was hot. But now if something hot is something totally, something totally different. Right. That's culture. So make sure you understand the culture in which the word of God was written in so you can understand it wasn't written in English. OK, it was translated in English. OK, depending on what part of the Bible that you're reading. One part of the Bible was written in Hebrew. The other part was written in Greek. OK, OK, it's for you Bible scholars and those that want to know that kind of good stuff. So but watch this what he said for the wages of sin. What is a wage? Anybody in an English term? What's a wage? Uh, it's a price. What else? Like a payment. It's something that you earn. Everybody here has a salary or a wage that you earn. OK, so let me give you an example. If, if you let's say you go, you don't go to work tomorrow. Right. But you don't call out. You just don't show up. Will you get paid for that? No. no. But if you have benefits and you say, hey, boss, I'm taking off tomorrow. Use my sick time. Right. That's a benefit. Right. Yeah. You still get paid for it. Notice what he said here. The wages of sin or the paycheck of sin is what? Death. It's death. The paycheck of sin is death. It costs you. Sin has pleasure for a season. OK. But here's the sin that would that, that 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 Adam sin is really disobedience. It means to miss the mark. OK, you miss the mark. There's a mark that you that you're going after, but you end up missing it because you're going after something else. Sin, it also comes from disobedience, meaning that you want to do what you naturally want to do. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So Adam, the original person that created sin. Adam. Came along, God said, don't touch, excuse me, don't eat of the tree of what life. What did Adam do? He ate of it. Was that an obedience to God or disobedience? Now, when that happened, the Bible says that sin entered into the world. Sin entered into the world. And all of a sudden now sin was passed on to all men so that every person that's born into this earth is born as a sinner. 
I don't care if your grandma was going to church, if you was following her going to church, it doesn't matter. You have to get born again. Every person must be born again. Now, here's the thing. The penalty of that sin, right? Inherent sin, where we inherited sin. The penalty of that sin was the punishment was death. Now, who took on death for you? Jesus. Who took on death for you? Jesus. So he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we may be the righteousness of God. And that's what this scripture is saying, that the wages of sin is death. So Satan had tricked uh, Adam into sinning against God and everything changed. Everything changed in the garden. You see, Adam was originally, he was just sitting there. God gave him an assignment, but he wasn't working by the sweat of his brow. We don't read that. In fact, if you look in the garden, he had gold. He had all these different things right there to his disposal. But after that, after he sinned, the Bible pushed him away from that garden. And then all of a sudden he said, you're going to go from, from the sweat of your brow. You're going to be in that the rest of your life. That's that is the curse. I said, that's the curse. That's the curse. But God has brought the blessing. He's brought the blessing through Jesus. And now you can receive his blessing. You hear what I'm saying? Now, but part of that blessing in which most Christians focus on is eternal life. They focus on eternal life. But eternal life is not just a, a salvation in the here and after. It is salvation now. It's salvation now. We just read in Luke chapter 10 that he's giving you power over the enemy, over all the power of the enemy. You don't, you're not going to worry about fighting the devil in heaven. You're going to fight the devil right here. So you don't only have victory when you get to heaven. You're supposed to have victory in this life. Don't let nobody on YouTube fool you in thinking that, that you don't have that. Or they say, well, that's a humanistic approach. No, it's not a humanistic approach. This is what Jesus came to give us. He came to give us a new covenant. Then the covenant means that he's going to give you something that he, that he has to back by his blood. And if he doesn't back it, he has to die. That's how powerful a covenant is. And that covenant has said that we've received eternal life. Say this with me right now. I have, I have. eternal life. In the name of Jesus. Say this with me. I have eternal, abundant life in the name of Jesus. That's what he paid for. That's what he purchased. He purchased your sin and he purchased your freedom. And now you have the keys. Remember, he came back with the keys of hell and death. Okay. He came back with the keys of hell and death. Keys represent authority. Well, sometimes we have to open this room in here. We had to go to the front desk and we said, hey, can we get the keys? When we first came here. Boy, they would not let us get the keys, but we've been here for so long now. They let us get the keys. Right. Because they know us. We ain't going to go back there and steal a chair or something like that. That's not what we're going to do. But they know those keys. Were, they gave that key. The, the hotel gave that key to the person that's in charge. Why? Because authority keys open doors. So if you've got the keys to the kingdom. You've got keys that can open up doors in your life life you've been trying to find a religious jesus where jesus does everything for you because you're gonna come to him emotionally you can be crying and all this kind of stuff but you've got the keys to the kingdom where you've got his word and when you've got his word you've got his sword you've got the you've got the weapons of your warfare listen listen to me real well you are in a war christian you are in a war right now and you have the first place of war is in your mind this is why I have to teach you new covenant faith so you can understand who you are. Are y'all with me so far? Yeah. Now, here's what he says. But the free gift, say the free gift of God, is eternal life in, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, the mind, when you start to put your mind on the fact that you have freedom in Christ, you're going to experience freedom. When you put your mind on the fact that you have freedom in Christ, you're going to experience freedom. If you put your mind on the fact that you have freedom in Christ, you will experience freedom. Glory be to God. I'm going to say it over, over and over again because you ain't listening. You're thinking about the chicken you're going to eat later. Are you thinking about the Super Bowl? I'm trying to tell you right now, if you put your mind on the freedom of God, you're going to experience it. You're going to walk into it. Let me give you an example. Moses. OK, Moses, did he murder a man or did he not murder a man? He murdered a man, right? He when he got up into the mountain with, with, with God, right? 
Did God remind him of how much he murdered the man? Not, not one time. Not one time did he come back and say, man, God can't use me because I murdered the man. He came down. The Bible said his face was shining just like it was like his radiance or God's presence was on him. So that goes to show us when we get in God's presence, he's not trying to beat us up about what we've done. Right. Right. So when you get your mind on the freedom that God has given to you, you will experience freedom. He didn't come back down from that mountain thinking about what he was not. He came back down from that mountain saying, oh, God, listen, I, God said this. Let's do it. And the Bible said, and, and, and the Lord, they kept saying over and over in scripture, and it said, and the Lord uh, obeyed Moses. And the Lord, uh, he, uh, it says, Moses uh, obeyed as, as God commanded him. It said it over and over and over and over again. You see, obedience is not birthed out of just doing something. Obedience is birthed out of a relationship. See, when you've got a free gift of eternal life, you want to do whatever God asks you to do. But if you think you got to earn God's righteousness, you got to earn God's favor, then guess what? You'll do it for a season, but then after a while, guess what? You'll stop doing it. Because it's like you're on this treadmill of performance and you never go anywhere. You're just going around the same mountain over and over again. This is a free gift of eternal life that you have that starts right here on, on this earth. You are a heavenly citizen. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Let's go there real quick. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Then somebody go to uh, Colossians chapter 2. No, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19. So somebody uh, in Colossians, what did I say first? For Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Somebody read that. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Ready? Somebody read it. Who got it? I got it. All right. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so our conversation, the word conversation is, again, this is one of those words that is not something that, that we would say. So we wouldn't say uh, our conversation. Uh, uh, we would say conversation would actually mean to have a conversation with someone. But what he's saying is your lifestyle. Your lifestyle or your citizenship is in where? What does it say? Heaven. In heaven. It's in heaven. Now, people get this idea of what heaven is and what heaven is not. Okay? But God is a God of heaven and of earth. John chapter 4 verse 24 says that God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, according to this scripture, we are citizens of heaven. Now, let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 2. Who has that verse? Yeah. All right, go. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the faith and members of the household of God. You are a citizen of heaven, which means that you represent heaven on this earth. Heaven looks to you as, as one of their own. You belong to heaven. You don't belong to your job. You don't belong to the earth. You belong to heaven. You are a citizen of heaven, which means that, that uh, heaven has its own economy, which means you're governed by a king of kings. You are governed by him. You're not governed by this <laughs> by this political system that the earth has. Glory be to God. You're governed by heaven. You're a citizen of heaven. You've got a passport, and some of you may have a passport, but it says that you're a United States uh, citizen, but you are a citizen of heaven. And the blood of Jesus is paid for that. Now, question, did you earn that gift? Did you earn that citizenship? So if you didn't earn that citizenship, how are you then with your works going to keep that citizenship? You can't. You see where the church gets off into works of doing things to be blessed. I'm going to do this so I can be what? Blessed. But that's not you already are blessed. Why are you in Ephesians? Look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Watch this. We're going to go through some scriptures today. It's okay. We at, at church. You should go through scriptures because it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you grow. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. Look at what it says. You there? All right. Should be. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who have blessed us. When, it, 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 the, I don't know about you, but uh, <clears throat> when something says half, or your Bible says have, or if you have an English Bible, the word have means past what? Tense. I already got it. I'm not trying to get it. I have it. 
Now, if you don't understand what that means, you're going to always be attempting to try to be blessed. Don't let the world make you think that you've got the car, you've got the trophy wife, you've got all these different things that you are blessed. The Bible says, watch where you're blessed at. You're blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So everything starts from heaven and then it comes to this earth. Remember what Jesus says, uh, uh, my will be done uh, uh, in heaven, uh, excuse me, on earth as it's done in what? heaven. His will in, 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 in heaven is always being done. The will of you being saved, the will of being healed, it's always done, but now it's got to extend to this earth. That's what Adam came to bring. He came to bring this blessing to the earth. He screwed it up, but Jesus got it back. And now you have this blessing on your life and you've been you received this blessing. The blessing is an empowerment to prosper in every area of your life, in every area of your life. Whatever you touch, it should work. Everything you do, it should work. Why? Because when you show up, glory be to God. We saw this on, on Thursday night when when uh, what's his name? Joseph showed up. Joseph was sold in slavery. He was sold in slavery. He had no property to his name. Am I right about it? Did we not read that in Genesis 39? And the Bible said that he was a prosperous man. Hold on, wait. How can somebody be prosperous when they're a slave? How can somebody be prosperous? Because you know your wealth is not determined by how many zeros you got in your bank account. Your wealth is determined about who you have with you. And who you have with you, the scripture said, and the Lord was with Joseph. So since the Lord is with Joseph, and the Lord now in this new covenant, the Lord is not just with you, the Lord's in you, glory be to God. And he's blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You are blessed right now. And you can give God a hand clap for that. Come on, that's good. So from this day forward, I want you to live from that place that you start living out of the spirit. How do you operate? How do you pull things out of the spirit? You pull things. I'm not talking about no Ouija board and all that dark magic. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about you going to the word of God. Glory be to God. This is a book of covenants. When you go to this book, it's a book of promise. Every promise in this book is yours. The blood of Jesus is paid for it. Glory be to God. Listen, that should get you excited. That when you look in this Bible, there's my answer. And if I have the answer, his blood paid for it, it's mine. He's blessed me with everything I need. I have what I need. I can now go forward in life. Are you listening to me? All right, now, let's go a little forward. Now watch this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22, notice this. It says, for as all die in who? So all may be made alive in who? Now, let me understand. Let me break something down. What does he mean to be made alive? When a person gets born again, what part of them becomes alive? Anybody know? Their spirit. You see, the spirit is your manufacturing center. It is the remember he said those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, God, he can't do nothing. See, see the flesh. You, the flesh <laughs> without the in, the in the the physical body. If the spirit man is not there, there's no life in the body. You are a spirit. You possess a soul, and you live in the physical body. So when you got born again and you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you became alive to God. Now that's not a feeling. That's not an emotion. This is a this is the truth. And when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. So when you, 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 I don't feel saved. You ain't supposed to feel saved, honey. You're supposed to know that you're saved. Glory be to God. You're supposed to know you got assurance of your salvation. The blood still works. You understand what I'm saying? And since you know the blood still works, you can become alive as you start to read about what the blood has done for you. See, this is the common trap of the church in these days is to get you away from the Bible to say, hey, don't take all that. We can just come together and we can talk about our emotions. We all can go to counseling. We can all do these different things. Listen, you got to stay with the word. That's what your victory is. I'm not coming against counseling. I'm just saying that if we go too far to the other spectrum, we won't get our victory because the victory, according to this, has already been paid for. You are made alive. Now, when he say you're going to be made alive after you went through counseling, is that what they say? You're made alive now. The implication is now you're made alive in Christ. You're made alive in Christ now. Oh, glory be to God. Now, now watch this now. Uh, go to me. Where, where are we at? Ephesians? Let's go to Colossians. Uh, what is it? Colossians chapter 1? Right. Yeah, Buster right. <laughs> My man, he on it. Colossians. Woo, glory be to God. 
You know what? Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Let me take this off real quick. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Are you there? All right. I love Paul. I love his writings. I love to read some of the things that he said, because if you notice in the New Testament, you'll find words in him, in Christ, in all, and you'll say, it'll say in, in God, all these different things. I gave you a book uh, last year. It was called um, In Him. It was a book by Kenneth E. Hagan. And if you don't have a copy of that book, I suggest you just ask me. I still have copies of them. I'll sow it into your life. But in the back of that book, it has all the scriptures in the New Testament that, that talks about who we are in Christ Jesus. I wrote a book one time talking about in him all the things that we have in Christ Jesus, because that's what we have. You have to know your inheritance in order to walk into it. You understand what I'm saying? You've got to know what's, what's yours if you're going to walk into it. The big, that's what happened to Adam. Adam didn't know. Adam didn't really un understand or he didn't fully understand what he had because if he would have knew what he had, he wouldn't have walked away from what God had told him to do. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm going to show you what the devil stole when that happened. But watch what he says here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. To whom, you there? Verse 27. Praise God. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery amongst the Gentiles, which is Christ in who? You, us. Christ in who? Us. In you. So Christ, if, <laughs> now the question, look at me. If, is Jesus Christ alive? Yes. yes. We know that, right? Yes. You believe that. If you don't believe that, we're going to start back at the basics. We get, you have to understand that Jesus died and he rose again. If you don't, uh, we, we get, at the end of the service, we can get you born again or come to Easter, Easter service. And I can preach you more about that. But notice what he says. Christ is alive, right? He's, if Christ is alive in heaven, remember, he's seated in heavenly places. But apparently God could be everywhere at once. Now he wants to be seated in what? You. So if he's seated in you, guess what? You are a heavenly place. You've got heaven on the inside of you. Some of you waiting to get to heaven so you can walk streets of gold when you're supposed to be walking down here with your head up, walking and doing everything that God called you to do. You understand what I'm saying? You are made alive in Christ. And if Christ made alive in Christ, Christ is in you. You see the correlation? Y'all tracking with me? Y'all tracking with me? Y'all see what I'm saying? All right. So now what he says, this, which is Christ in you. Here's a mystery for generations nobody could figure out. Paul comes along and he writes this and said, which is Christ in you. It's the hope of glory. Listen, if you're waiting for some, 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 some people are waiting for, for Jesus to come in front of them. I've heard people have visitations with Jesus. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doubting that. I'm not saying anything negative to that. But some of us may not ever experience that. But you can experience the presence of God on the inside of you. For as many as led by the spirit of God, they are the children of God. It is the marker to let you know, the identif identification mark to let you know that you're born again. Okay. Now, I've had some experiences where God has, has come along and gave me a vision or he came along and said these things. But I'm not led by that. I'm not looking for that experience. I'm looking into the word of God and see what the word of God says. Because the word of God is spiritual. And if I stick with the word of God, I know the word of God. I don't need an outer experience to know God is real. You understand what I'm saying? I don't need an outer experience to know that God is real. I can read and know he's real because I'm a believer. I'm supposed to believe everything he said. And if this is in the Bible, I'm made alive in Christ Jesus. So when you go to work this week and you're feeling depressed, no, 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 say, no, wait a minute. I'm made alive in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. I'm made alive in Christ Jesus. This is just where I'm going through right now. Glory be to God. I'm made alive. See, it's your attitude. See, what how Joseph got through those times, it was his attitude. You're never going to get beyond your attitude that you have. Maybe God has you in the position where you are so he can develop some character out of you so you can be prepared for the weight of his glory that's going to come upon you when you get into the will of God for your life. Jesus was sweating blood. Jesus was sweating blood. The weight of the sin of humanity was on him. And at that moment, he was like, listen, he was like, God, if this cup could pass from me, 
if it could pass from me. But he said he had to get back into character what God had already planned. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will. There's something about long term obedience to do something. Glory be to God. If you just stay with it over and over and over again. Somebody said, well, pastor, why do you stay with it every week? Listen, because I know God has called me to this and there's going to be evidence of God's work. I've got to continue on. I've got to stay obedient to what he said to me because I have no other the choice you understand what i'm saying you understand what i'm saying yes, yes. so he was sweating blood the temptation of the enemy tried to stop him from doing what god called him to do but he didn't look outward he looked inward because he said this is what he said in john chapter 10 verse 30 watch this go to john chapter 10 verse 30 i'm preaching better than you saying amen but look at john chapter 10 verse 30 notice what he says here mm -mm -mm. good googly goo this is good right here <laughs> For those who don't know what that is, that comes from uh, Fred Sanford. <laughs> Grady. <laughs> Watch this. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 30. Read it out loud. Ready? Read. All right, let's start again. All right. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 30. Ready? Read. I and my father are one. What did he say? Now, he said, Jesus said, that, this is what he said previously. He said, the works that I do. He, the first thing he said, the works that you see, it, it's my father that does the work in me or doing the works through me. Glory be to God. What Jesus was saying, listen, I'm not here by myself. I and the father are one. I am one with him. I, now, some of many of you are thinking, oh, yeah, of course he's one with him. That's the Trinity. Now look at John chapter 17. Watch this. John chapter 17. Y'all with me so far? Yes, sir. All right. John chapter 17, let me get that myself. Now watch what Jesus said. Here's a prayer of Jesus. There's very few uh, scriptures that are prayers of Jesus Christ that we can find in the Bible. But here is one. Watch this verse 20. Neither, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their what? Now, who, now how did you come to faith? You believe through what? The, the word of God. So this was a prayer Jesus was talking about you. You might want to highlight this one. You might want to underline this one. You might want to see what this prayer is that Jesus had to pray in the Bible about you. Now watch what he says. Now, he says, let me read it again with that context. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be what? As you, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they may also be one in who? Us. You are one in Christ, with Christ. You are one with him. Now, I know you're trying to look and say, but listen, I don't feel like Jesus. I don't look like Jesus. All this kind of stuff, you're trying to make excuses of why you fall short. But the grace of God pulls you up to a standard, glory be to God, that you are the body of Christ. You are one with him. I don't see there you go. Don't get I don't feel like I'm one with Christ. Well, he prayed for you that you could feel that way, that you could be that way. And once he said it, it sells it, it's done. Yeah. Watch what he said here. He says, Now, why does he do that? That you may be one in him, that the world may believe. See, it's time out for the church to just be playing church. It's time for the church to be the church. Yeah. And so when we do that, we are people of miracles, signs, and wonders. And when miracles, signs, and wonders start happening, I'm telling you right now, the world is going to catch the world's attention. Listen, the world is looking at people and they're seeing, they're marking success by what a person has. Mm -hmm. They mark success by what a person has. They did, they slept on Jesus. They slept on the word. The Bible says, he, listen, he gave up his uh, divinity to come to this world. The Bible says he was rejected by his own, meaning that he was rejected by the own creation that he came to. But now he has a name above every other name that's given. Listen, and he's made the body of Christ. He's brought us up to a level as one with him. And don't be concerned about what you have. They're more concerned about who you have with you. You understand what I'm saying? Am I preaching? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now watch what he says. And the glory, verse 22, and the glory which you gave me. Ooh, 
Now, glory means manifested goodness. It means the weight, the weight of God. It means the presence, the kind of glory of God, the presence of God. He says that power, that glory that you give to me, I give to them. Glory be to God. You don't have to wait for the, it's in you already. It's you already got it. Hallelujah. You have it now. I don't feel like it. Are you, it's not about how you feel. Get your feelings out of the way. When you wake up in the morning, you don't have to feel motivated. You just, listen, I was watching a meme the other day, and this meme said, the girl, the woman, when she has a bad day, she gets on the phone, she's crying, she's doing all these different things, and, and she's feeling sad, and she gets on the couch, and she eats and do all this thing, and the guy, he gets, and he looks to watch a Kobe Bryant uh, motivational thing, and then he's up and ready to go. And she's like, what's up with that? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it, 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 it really is what they're saying. The world is saying, trying to say that they need to find an outside source right. so they can feel a certain way. You don't need to find the outside source. You have everything in you. That's right. Everything that pertains to life and godliness is already in you. And if you don't understand that as the church, you're going to be beat up by the waves of life. You're going to become like Adam. You're going to forfeit the authority that you have. And allow the devil to walk right over you and steal everything from your life that he's trying to take. He sees the glory on your life. He sees the glory on your marriage. He sees the glory on your children. He wants to take that from you because he's a thief. Yeah. That's all he does. And he wants to deceive you to think that you if you don't have a, a Bentley outside, if you don't have this many figures in, in your bank account, if you're not living on a jet on an island somewhere, that you're not living where you're supposed to be. And then it's going to get you in this rat race running to try to chase something that you already have. That's right. Because if you want with God, the earth belongs to God. That's right. It's already yours. He has one way to get you into that path. All you got to do is walk with him. Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 says this. He gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant that he swore unto Abraham. You don't have to fight to get wealth. You don't have to work to get wealth. Wealth is yours. Gold was already in the garden. You go get it by faith. You go get it by faith. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, Am I preaching to you? Yes, All right. Now, let's go on a little further. Here's where the devil took it from Adam. Luke chapter 4. Okay, Luke chapter 4. Mm -mm -mm. Luke chapter 4. Go back and make sure you read that in John 17. That's very powerful. But I want to go on a little further because I want to make sure I get you out of here on time. And trust me, this series, we're going to take our time in. Praise God. It's going to take a couple of weeks for you to start to understand this and start to operate in it. So Luke chapter 4, verse 5 to 8. Watch this. And you can look up here if you don't have it. But. Uh, that's OK for, for time's sake. Let's look up here. It says, and the devil led him to a high place and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of this. What? Now, the devil led who? Jesus. He led Jesus to a high place. So remember, we read in Luke that, that the devil was kicked out of what? Heaven. And he came to this earth. Ephesians tells us that he's the God of this world. Now, watch what he said. He led him to all the kingdoms of this world. Now, you can't have a kingdom without having dominion. The word kingdom comes from the word dominion, rule, authority. And you can't have a kingdom without having money, without having wealth. You understand what I'm saying? Without having an economy to control people or economy to pay people. Because watch what he said here. He says, and he said to him, Jesus, I will give you all their authority and splendor because it's been given to me. When did he get that from? He got it from Adam. He got it from Adam. He got everything from Adam because Adam was given, the, given dominion over the entire earth. And now it's in the hands of the devil. And now he's trying to tempt Jesus to bow down and worship him. My God. Don't you think that the enemy trying to get you to bow down and worship his system so you can follow him? This is why I've been saying to you and I need to start saying to you more. This is why Moses stood before Pharaoh and he said, let my people go. Yeah. It's time for us to come out of the world system and get into the kingdom of God. Yeah. If you keep bowing down to it, you will never worship God with everything that you have. Yeah. You're going to still be a part of that system. Watch what he says. It has been given unto me, and I can give it to anybody I want. Look at the devil, how bad he talking. 
the nerve to talk to Jesus like that. I know Jesus was like you. <laughs> and he said, and if you worship me, all of this will be yours. Of course you know what Jesus said. Get thee behind thee, Satan. He said, for it is written, get thee behind me, Satan. Do not be deceived to think that the trappings of this world. See, because notice he gives Satan. Satan still has wealth that he's still power that he gives the people to push his message. You understand what I'm saying? He gives them to the push his message, message and agenda. He gives them this power and he gives them wealth. But they don't tell him that it's bankrupt where he pulls the rug out from under them. And then they left out there by themselves. Because the wages of sin is what? Yeah. But the gift of God is eternal life. I was growing up. I remember. I don't know about you. I grew up in the, in the 80s <laughs> and, 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 you know, 80s and 90s. And I remember TV used to go off at a certain point at night. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Man, it go, beep. Yeah. Yeah, they, 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 young man over my yep. He don't even know about that. <laughs> you know, he ain't never seen nothing like that. Now. And then they used to have not Christine program on there, but at least you could watch. Remember, y'all used to watch Charlton Hester with Moses around Easter and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Remember that stuff? stuff? Yeah. I never watched none of it. I ain't gonna watch it. <laughs> I know it was on. I was just like, psh, psh, you know what I'm saying? But but now we look. It's so much filth on that television. I was listening to somebody today. They said that that there was this um, priest. Who is a uh, he, uh, he? He I guess he ex gets devils out. What they call exorcism, and he uh, he does exorcism. And he said that America is under the spell of the devil. And and they said, what's one of the main ways that the America is under the spell of the devil? He said, what they watch through television, because they open themselves to things that come in. You can watch. You can't watch the Grammys now. You cannot watch the stuff because when you watch the stuff, they got snakes and all kind of rituals that they're doing that you invite into your house and to your heart. You understand what I'm saying? And so and, and, and what they're doing is inviting people to worship them. But when the church and the church be right there. But when the church has to come in and worship God, they don't know how to worship God because they've been worshiping to a, a false spirits, evil spirits. You got to break that off of you. You got to go to another level. And it's going to take teaching like this. And I know they get mad on me on YouTube when I start talking about the Bible. I'm going to still keep talking about the Bible because it's the source of life. Glory be to God. You hear what I'm saying? How can they hear unless a preacher is what? Sent. I, come on, persecution. Hundredfold. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. Come on, persecute. It says, if you be persecuted, a hundredfold. Glory be to God. If y'all don't believe me, look at it in Luke chapter 10. Turn on it real quick. Luke, what is it? Luke chapter 10 or Mark chapter, what is it, Tree? I think it's Mark chapter 10. Mark. I put it on the spot. My bad, Tree. I think it's Mark. She's like, man, I'm, man, I'm back here with the camera, bro. <laughs> I'm trying to take what you say. <laughs> Mark chapter 10. You're right. Mark chapter 10. Watch this. Mm -mm -mm. Verse 29 it says, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house, brethren, sisters, father, mother, wife, children, lands, for my sake and the what? Gospel. But he shall receive what? When? When? Now. now. In this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mother, children, and lands with what? Persecution. So when you make a stand for God, People are going to persecute you. Yes. You better get ready for it. They're going to persecute you. You don't think they persecuted Jesus because he didn't worship him? Yes. Satan turned it up a notch. Yes, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And the Bible says they thought he won. The devil so, <laughs> he's an idiot. He thought he won. And the Bible says if he were known, he would never crucify the That's Lord of right. glory. That's right. So when persecutions come, and they will, remember persecutions and affliction, they arise for the word's sake. Stay with the word. That's where your victory is. But he says, listen, they come, but watch this. But you also come with the hundredfold. Yes. The hundredfold. A hundredfold is not, a, it's not getting a, a, a hundred dollars. You sow a hundred dollars and then you get a hundred times that. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about the greatest rate that a farmer can yield. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. 
in the greatest rate that he could yield in one year. This was an agricultural society that understood agriculture. We are a technology society that doesn't know anything about agriculture. In fact, most of the farming we do is by technology. You better be careful what you eat. That's all I'm going to say about that. You understand what I'm saying? We were looking at some report that they farm raised uh, uh, salmon. Yeah, salmon was what? It was, was what? Had, has worms and all kinds of parasites in it. That's all I'm going to say about that. Just be careful. Because when it comes to food, it comes to an industry, they'll cut corners to make yeah, money. You better pray over your food. You better pray about what God is saying this season. You see, when the trump of Christ comes, it's going to be, the trump is not going to be a loud trump sound. It ain't going to be like that. It's going to be those that can hear it. Those that can hear it. So you better start hearing God now. You understand what I'm saying? Glory be to God. Now, whoa, glory, glory, glory. Now he says, well, where am I at? Verse 30, right? He says, and mothers, sisters, mothers, and children, and lands with persecutions, and in the world will come eternal life. But watch this verse 31. But many that are what? Shall be what? See what happened. These guys that chose the devil, they're going to end up being last. They're going to be out there weeping and gnashing of teeth. They're going to say, man, I wish I would have heard what you had said. I, I wish you was. I wish I would have believed that Bible, but I was believing the God of money. You can't serve God and mammon at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? But he says those that are last and those that actually put themselves last, they submit themselves to God will become first. Yeah. Let me show you this in Philippians. Oh, man, this is good, man. I got to got to get back to the message. But let me show you this. Let me show you an example of someone doing this. Philippians chapter two, Jesus, because Jesus is our example. We have to follow Jesus. We have to follow Jesus. You say, how can I follow Jesus? Get into the word of God and begin to follow Jesus. Glory be to God. Uh, once you accept Jesus in your life, start reading about Jesus. That's why I picked a uh, Bible reading plan. Or God had us do a Bible reading plan that has us reading the Old Testament and the New Testament at the same time. You understand what I'm saying? So it could bring in the balance of which covenant that we're under. Now, what did I say go? Philippians chapter 2. All right, let's look at this. All right, Philippians, let me get there myself. How many of y'all already there? Yep. Praise God. Give yourself a hand. Praise God. All right, now watch this, what he said. Now, let this mind, verse 5, let this mind be in you. Verse 5 which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, you want to know what Christ Jesus was like? And he said, let this mind be in you. Now, what this means is you got to think like Jesus. You got to start thinking like Jesus. Now, what's what he said? Who being, and I've been quoting this all day, and, and, and just didn't say where it was, but he, he, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a what? And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he what? You know why he humbled himself? Because humility brings exaltation. If you exalt yourself, you will be humbled. You understand what I'm saying? But he humbled himself. When he had, he had every right to stand before people and say, I am God. Yeah. But he would, he would identify as the son of man to identify with us. Bible talks about how he wept, how he was hungry, all these different things about Jesus. In fact, he was instead he was born a king, but yet he was born in a manger. Kings are born in palaces, people. Right. They, they're born back then. They didn't have hospitals. So they had palaces. So they were born in palaces through midwives and all this kind of stuff and plush and have this big experience and everybody's celebrating and everybody's dancing and all this kind of stuff. But this man was born in a manger outside in the back to prove his humility. The Bible says he comes in. Zechariah talks about how he comes in lowly on a donkey. A donkey, <laughs> a donkey is an animal of a peace. If he would came riding on a horse, that means he's coming for war. But he's coming back on a horse. Glory be to God. So he's coming back with his eyes fire red. You understand what I'm saying? Now watch this. He said, but notice what he said. Let this mind be in you. What mind is that? Humility. Put on the clothing of humility. I don't care how long you've been doing this, how long you know things. Listen, always be humble because the devil has no defense against humility. He can't do anything against that. Now watch what he said. He says, and he humbled himself and he became what? Obedient. See, obedience is birth 
through humility. When you humble yourself and you say, God, whatever it is you want me to do, I'll do it. Faithfulness is doing it over and over and over and over and over again until you're told to do something else. I'm going to be right here pastor in this church until God tell me to do something else. Other than that, I'm not looking for something else. I'm not looking for something outside of here where I'm looking for my shot. No, this is the shot. This is what God's called me to do. I'm your pastor and I'm going to be here. You understand what I'm saying? And my job is to equip you to do the work of the ministry. And I'm going to do this week in, week out. It don't matter how tired I am. I'm going to come in here and do what God called me to do. You understand what I'm saying? So that you could be all that God calls you to be. Now, don't glorify me. I'm just saying God uses me in this position so that I could bless you. But I am not God. Yeah. Okay. I am not your savior. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? I have to humble myself too. Mm-hmm. Glory be to God. He's hum- like right now I'm being obedient to what he has me to say versus what he wrote to what I wrote down earlier this week. Now, he says, be obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, some when you put yourself last, excuse me, when you put yourself last, you'll be willing to do obedience, do whatever he tells you to do. He knew that his obedience meant his death. And he said, let that mind be in you. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Pastor. Now, wait a minute. Hold on now. I don't know about that kind of obedience. Listen, whatever it is, this faith was so, well, so relevant to the, each apostle that those apostles died for it. They died for their faith. And Matthew tells us, Jesus tells us, that the day is coming where the persecution is coming back to the church. Mm. Mm-hmm. And see what real faith we have at that time. Glory be to God. Watch what he says. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus. Everybody just say the name of Jesus right now. Woo, every knee should bow. Of things, of things in heaven. And so things in heaven. And under the earth, on the earth, under the earth, everywhere, at the name of Jesus, you've been given that name. Glory be to God. You have the name of Jesus. Listen, you can use the name of Jesus anytime you want. It has to bow to the name of Jesus. Don't bow to the devil when he says, if you come over here, I can give you that. Because he will come. He will come. He will come. He will come and try to tempt you away from what you're doing right now. I was working a job one time and this job said, well, uh, you're going to have to work on Sundays. I was like, Lord, man, I don't want to work on no Sundays because I can't go to church. I can't go to church. So what I did was I was I, 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 I had taken I was I was, well, I was driving this. I ain't going to say the company, but I was driving the truck. And so at when church was going on, I, I did my route earlier that morning and I went and bro- I drove the truck to the church. <laughs> Locked the door and came in there. And so the, at the time, the pastor had some kind of prayer and he said, uh, you know, ask people to come up. So I came up and the deacon was at, at the church and he said, and I, I just felt God, you know, I just need to come up for prayer. I came up and I said, and he asked me, what do you want to pray about? That I can be off on Sundays so I can get the word of God. The man looked at me and he just smiled. I never forget his smile that he had on his face. And he said, brother. That's what you believe in God for. God can do it for you. You not know that I was off on Sundays from down. (laughs) I went back to work. They they changed things because I went to the spirit. You start in the spirit. You don't start in the flesh. So you start in the flesh, you complain there. Mm -hmm. But you start in the spirit with your prayer. You connect with heaven. That's your covenant right. You understand what I'm saying? And laws uh, uh, laws will be changed and reversed on your behalf. When you do that, Matthew chapter seven, let's look at this real quick. Y'all with me? Matthew chapter seven. Mm, mm, mm. Are y'all getting anything out of what I'm saying today? Man, we didn't get nowhere near what I was trying to get to, but that's okay. Praise God. Matthew chapter seven and verse seven. Is it verse seven? Yeah, seven and verse seven. Matthew, the book of Matthew chapter seven, verse seven. All right, let's read that out loud. Ready? Read it. So what did he say? He's telling you, he's giving you an open invitation to do what? Ask. Why would he tell you to ask if he's not going to give it to you? Huh? Why would he tell you to ask if he's not going to give it to you? 
I asked God for Sundays off so I could be here. I, I here's what happened. I just I kind of like rededicate my life. I said, you know what? Let me get back on God. And here comes Satan. Won't you bow down to me? Get this money. And now I was going to be working on Sundays. I had to make a choice. I had to draw a line in the sand. I wouldn't be standing here today if I would have chose money back then. Right. I had to choose what was more important. Sometimes you got to say no to get to your God's yes, yes. to where he's trying to get you to. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. He said, ask, and it'll be what? Given unto you. That's what he said, right? Yep. That's what he said. So hold him to that because that's, he, that's a hot sauce. That's his blood he paid for that. That's a part of your new covenant. Yeah, you got to ask him. If you don't ask, you ain't going to get nothing. It's just like me saying, oh, man, we got this new drive, but uh, uh, I hope the clothes get clean. No, I had to go there and put the clothes in there. I've got to do my part. I've got to do what I've got to. I got to work the drive. Put the put, first put them in the washer. Don't put them in the drive. Put them in the washer, then put them in the drive. Right. Am I right about it? And then it, now, you know how some people do. They, they leave the basket and the basket be piled up for weeks. No, you got to fold the clothes up so that people can use the clothes and they can be where they need to be. You understand what I'm saying? I do that role in my house. That's, I, that's, that's, that's my role. Understand what I'm saying? Because there are roles of responsibility in a marriage that we're supposed to play. Glory be to God. It's called la division, labor of love. I, she, I don't cook, so I can't cook. Now, I burn, I burn anything. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I burn water. You understand what I'm saying? But that's, that my wife does that. But I could help out in other places. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't no punk if you washing clothes. I'm telling you that right now. You understand what I'm saying? You say, you know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. It's a division of love. So anyway, ask and it will be given unto you. Knock. Seek. Knock. God, am I supposed to be doing this? Do you want me to do this? Seek God's wisdom. God, do you want me to do it? Then show me how to do it. This is a personal relationship that we have in the new covenant where you could personally know God, not just some God off in the clouds, off somewhere in the distance. No, you can get to know him personally. You understand what I'm saying? If not, the enemy is going to try to get you to know him personally because he's going to offer you a counterfeit. Something that looks authentic. Something that looks real, but it is false. The Bible says that the devil masquerades as an angel of light. So you got to be so close to the word of God that you know the light. I'm talking to a generation that may not know light and say, we don't need that no more. That's an old archaic Bible. We don't need that. Yes, but you need that. Obviously, you need it because that's where your deliverance is. You understand what I'm saying? All right. Four minutes. Can you believe that? Praise God. I told you I'll get you out here at 12. All right. So let me go here to this. This is how God is going to deliver you. Let me show you this story real quick, and we'll go back to that last, next week. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 through 8. And it says here, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show them that they should always what? Pray. And never give up. I want to encourage you today. You start the music, huh? Uh, I, I want to encourage you today. Keep praying. Keep believing. Okay. Sometimes this won't come out unless you do prayer and fasting. Because sometimes of what you've been praying for, you need to clear the the spiritual uh, junk or clutter from you hearing from God on exactly what you need to do. But in the covenant, God asks us to pray. And he's telling us, according to this story, to never give up. You see, giving up is a place of an attitude that you give up because you ain't got what you, you were looking for yet. And that's where the enemy comes and says, listen now, at your weakest, because you're looking for the thing, the enemy comes to tempt you with something to make you think that if you go his way, you can get it quicker. But when you pray, the Bible says, never give up. And there was a judge in a certain city who who said he said who uh, excuse me, who neither neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city. She was a widow, right? Of that city came to him repeatedly, not once. Over and over again, saying, give me what justice in the dispute with my what? We've been talking about the enemy the whole time. The enemy has been stealing from you. He's been stealing from your family. He's been stealing your joy. And you need to come to God and say, God, I demand justice. God is Jehovah. She called out the name of God's earlier. One of the name of God's name of God is Jehovah Gamora. The Lord God, my recompense. And he wants to 
recompense or compensate you for what the enemy has done for you. You see, the enemy comes at you one way, but he's supposed to flee before you seven ways. And then you're supposed to take back what he's taken from you. I'm talking about generations of things that he stole from you. Generations of things that he showed, stole from your great, from your ancestors. You are the generation to go get it. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Give me three minutes and I'll let you go. Watch what he says. And, and he says, the judge ignored her for a while. But finally he said to himself, I don't fear God. I don't care about the people. But this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she's wearing me out with her constant request. That's called faith. That's called persistence. Some of you need to stand the gap for your children. Constantly, constantly, and then get into a place of praise. God, I thank you that my children are saved, that they're born again, that they're following God's plan for their life. My mom did that religiously. I would not be sitting here today if it wasn't for her prayers. I used to come in the house high and drunk and she'd be sitting there waiting. I get home and she'd be praying for me. I would not be here right now. You understand? Now she's going to heaven. I'm standing on her shoulders. You understand what I'm saying? I had the opportunity back in my hometown. I found I had an uncle that was a distant uncle. And he was a pastor of this predominantly uh, African-American church. And it was a large church. And I had the opportunity to go there and minister for the 100th, 100th year celebration. And when I was there, I found out that my uncle was a pastor there. And I had to and remember the, the bus. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> long story we, we can tell you about it later. But I had the opportunity to preach there. But I can only think about prayers of generations before me that were praying for me. To be where I am right now. You understand what I'm saying? Now as a pastor, I'm going back. And I'm leading my family the right way. I'm showing them which way to go. And now I'm doing what God's called me to do. And I'm telling you, you can do what God's called you to do. You understand what I'm saying? I'm taking back everything. Every day that I, I was high and drunk, I want that time back. Redeem yes. that time yes. back to me. Yes. Glory be to God. Re heal my mind. Glory be to God. Yes. My brain cells, all my brain cells operate in the way that they're supposed to operate. Yes. You won't steal from me anymore. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Glory be to God. And so the Lord said, verse 6, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think that God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him what? Day and night. That's your covenant right. You can cry out to God and God will hear you and answer your prayers. We're supposed to be living by what? Faith. So you need to start living by faith, people. You got this new covenant gives you boldness. And I'll talk more about the new covenant next week. But did you get anything out of this today? This develops faith for you to go to another level. I'm tired of the devil beating you up. I'm tired of hearing stories about what he's doing. No, what are you doing? What are you doing to advance his kingdom? You understand what I'm saying? Yes. It's time to go to that next level. It's time. And it's not time next week. It's today. It's now. Faith is now. Today. So, Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is good. And your word to us, Lord God, grants us justice. And you said when the son of man returns, will he find faith on the earth? I declare that these are people of faith. They will operate by faith. They will live by faith. They will be known for their faith. They will, you're still writing Hebrews 11. And, there, and these people in here will be a part of that in the name of Jesus. By faith. They conquered this by faith. They did this by faith. They did this over and over and over again. Give them a uh, victory, Lord God, over and over again. Let them not fall to the devil system. Let them not fall for the devil's devices. We're not ignorant of his devices. God, we declare victory because the name of Jesus is above every other name that's named. So, God, we thank you today, Lord God, that as we hear from we heard from you, your word. The God that we're, we're not the same. We won't leave here the same. God, we trust you. We trust your plan for our life. 
We will yield to it. We'll submit to it. And we'll be found faithful in what you called us to do. Father, I thank you for every person in this room. I just plead the blood of Jesus over them. That you touch them, their families. Everything that they say, touch and do will prosper in the name of Jesus. God, I declare your anointing be upon them to remove every burden and destroy every yoke. I declare, Lord God, that their families are blessed. I declare that the tears that they have cried will be no more. It'll be tears of joy. I thank you, Lord God. No longer whooped and defeated, but victorious and overcoming. This is your people. Now to him who's able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to our God and our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.